This little guy here, the little module you see here, is the SparkFun SI7021 LoRa module. It's a it's a Arduino with a LoRa radio transceiver. Um, you program it with the Arduino IDE. And uh, I brought the code and the flowchart for it, which you can see here. I'll hook it up. And of course, I'm using the device I'm doing the video with on think forward here. So we plug in the module. And the cell phone is powering the module. You can see the lights up here. <coughs> okay. I'm launching a um, terminal emulator. I hope we all remember the 60s. All right. Connecting. It says that it's connected here and it's sending a message waiting for message. So if I touch the message part, the keyboard comes up and uh, I put in a little message here, type it in, and hit send. Hear it? Yes. They need to open the door. Open the door. Put the candle back. That's good. <laughs> Okay, sending another message. Okay, this is all text, numbers and text, right? No uppercase, just text. Okay. I slowed it down so us uh, old guys can follow along. <laughs> but the speed is not important. What it's doing now is a transmitter simulator, Morse code simulator. So the, the gateway, which is in the other room, is connected by radio, the LoRa radio, long range. LoRa is short for long range. So the, the cell phone is sending a text message by LoRa to the gateway, the gateway is translating the text message into Morse code and controlling a transmitter and sending the Morse code. Of course, there's no remote control of the transmitter other than the key. But most transmitters today are remote control anyway, so. Right, the modern ones, not the old ones. <laughs> okay. Back to the video, shall we? So now you know that a text message can be sent by the LoRa radio to the gateway. The gateway is controlling the transmitter. So to bore you further, this is the this is the flowchart for the transmitter for this module here. The, the complexity of this is that there's programming to do on the transceiver that, that does terminal emulation, and there's programming to do on the gateway that controls the transmitter. Um, this is the flowchart for, for this module. And uh, as you can see here, this part right here, this is typical of any uh, Arduino. Have to, you know, it loads the libraries, sets up the variables and the constants, loads the setup, which initializes the radio, checks to see if it's working. And there's all this stuff that the radio can do. 
and then um, it goes into the loop, which is the hard part. The loop is mostly programming, so this is the loop. It goes, it drops down, goes around, does some checks, and maybe some errors here. I just created this yesterday. But it just basically checks to see that the serial port is open and available or in use. Uh, it, it listens for the control carriage return line feed from the terminal. Um, if it gets one, it, it loads the uh, message out of the uh, serial port into the buffer in the uh, Arduino. Sends the message through the LoRa. If the LoRa is available, um, it uh, waits for a reply message from the gateway. If all of that works, it turns on the LED here, <coughs> sends the uh, posts a reply, received reply on the terminal, um, and the, the signal strength. So you get to check the signal strength of the radio. Um, that's this part right here. This is the, actually the most complex, that block right there. I could have broken it out, but it'd be terribly boring. <laughs> so um, it waits a certain amount of time, turns off the LED, and then um, <coughs> then jumps out and waits for half a second and then listens to the port again. So it's basically an endless loop that never ends. So this is why we have no end in the loop. It's, it's constantly working. Any questions? So do you get an how, how do you get that signal back there? It's radio. It's okay. ISM low raw radio. <coughs> and uh, this module will, will uh, communicate in two-way with the gateway 10 kilometers. That's six miles. Oh, wow. with, just, with just a little wire antenna like this. If you put a better antenna, uh, people are getting, there are people who have uh, uh, world records of 200 kilometers. Um, and they've already tested these with satellites. They've put the low rise in the satellite, and uh, you can do two-way communication with the satellite as it goes over. Um, I fully suspect that the uh, low rise will be built into smartphones and your car and all, you know, everything will have it because it's so reliable. Um, now this is just a low raw radio. Um, there is an, a, a larger set of hardware called low raw WAN, wide area network. Um, any module can be switched to the wide area network with the gateway just with a, a small hardware change and um, um, a few different libraries. But the WAN allows you to use any number of radio modules with any number of channels. So um, one gateway, for instance, like the little box in there that's 60 bucks, can handle thousands of these at once, literally thousands. And uh, these are being put on cattle, you know, a little clip in the ear with a uh, geolocator so that, the, uh, you know, you go online, you look at the website, and it shows you where all your cattle is, you know. Um, moisture in the soil, uh, like, like this with, uh, with the hams with the remote control. So if we, we go to... So we can look at the code here. It's basically, when you see the start button, the code launches, loads the libraries, that's the includes, set the variables, that's the next section, drops down, load the Arduino setup, this is the, this is the setup, this is the stuff the hands like right here, the setup. You can see here the, um, set the frequency, um, that's uh, ISM band 915 megahertz. So there are, what, uh, I think there are 20 channels there that are totally open. And each one can have 
several hundred of these modules in each channel because there's no, there's no chance of it colliding or anything like that. Um, you set the power level, the output, you turn the power level down to save power. So this little module, the little battery that I have right here, this will run for two and a half days on this, this little battery alone at full power. With, you know, totally autonomous. Don't need this to do things. Um, anything that the Arduino will do, this will do. The, the gateway is Arduino Yun. Yun is Chinese for cloud. Um, so the gateway is in the cloud and it will communicate with um, Watson, uh, IBM Watson, um, ThinkSpeak, which is um, MATLAB, uh, the Things Network, which is European. Europeans are way ahead of us on this. There's much more development going on in Europe than here on this with this technology. They're way ahead of us. There are thousands of gateways online. So I could put this gateway on the roof here with, a, with an antenna, and everybody in, in, in this whole area could use it. So uh, there's the spreading factor. By spreading factor, it's spread spectrum. That's how it gets um, extended range, by being spread spectrum. Um, signal bandwidth, uh, there are a whole bunch of choices there. And uh, the coding rate, uh, there are a couple of things there I don't understand, but I don't have to. I just have to set them right here and right on the gateway. If they match, it works. And then the loop, this is the programming part, the part that no one wants to do. Um, so everything in the, in the flowchart you see in the code, and I won't, I won't bore you with the code unless you have questions. <laughs> Any questions about the code? Hopefully not. <laughs> so you can see that, uh, every, th that the code is, is quite um, weird. This is the serial port stuff that, that displays on the, on the uh, terminal and so on. If I mount the... Uh, <coughs> Can you download the code from somewhere? No, I created the code. Yeah, you have... Can yeah. you upload it then? Yes, I can share it. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. Since you've done all the work... Uh, yeah. And this is still rudimentary. It's very rudimentary. So let's go to here. Okay, yeah, this is the, this is the gateway flowchart. I thought I'd left it behind, but here it is. And I can't find the cursor. The bugs are in the way. <laughs> okay, this is much simpler. And I could break this out. I could, this could be pages and pages. But basically, it's very similar to the code that goes in here, except... It has to translate the message to Morse code. Um, and that code is available online. That, you know, it's quite, quite popular. And, and there are several different ways to do it. I used uh, case switch to do it. Um, and I was able to add all of the new stuff. There are a few uh, codes that are not old Morse code. There are a few new ones. And this does all of them. So numbers, letters. And the at symbol, that's what's been added, so you can do email. So it's just a matter of adding to this code so that it can send the message as email instead of controlling the transmitter. It's very, you know, since all the code is there and it's doing all the translation, I can, I can have it do Morse code and email, either way, both ways. Okay, let's go back. Go back to the code. Okay, view syntax. It's C. Okay. All of this stuff here is the Arduino. This is the. These are the libraries. This is the frequency it's using. Nine oh nine point two. It's turning on the heart LED. Is the the uh, uh, on the gateway? An LED comes on to show you that the code is live doesn't have to, but it's, you know, it's good to know that your code's running with an LED, otherwise you wouldn't know. Um, these are the variables for the, 
you know, uh, they, are, the Arduino, the UN, and, and the gateway is actually generating the code using uh, pulse code modulation. Uh, this sets it up. There's the dot and dash lengths, and uh, the, the relative lengths. Uh, you see the init dot len equals 100. That um, that's the speed at which the code is is uh, being transmitted. So uh, I could put a pot or a switch on the um, hardware, and I could change the speed at which it's transmitting. You know, I, I, I made it really slow. Yes, sir, Neil? I'm not sure I follow what you're saying. Is this how many characters per second you're sending? Or? It's, yeah, it's the rate. It's, you know, there, there's a relative, um, oh, like three and seven. It's, yeah. In other words, the smaller that number is, the faster the code will be, will be going. So you're not sending Morse code across the No. Board. You're sending a message text. to the code. It's, it's packet text. To the gateway, and this is the code on the gateway. Uh, it receives the uh, the packet from the radio, puts it in a buffer, and uses a uh, a case switch to select the numbers out of the text. What's the data rate on the RF link for the, tech, for the information um, A page, let's say, two thousand characters, which is really too long. Let's say forty characters. That's a typical message, 40 characters in you know, one sentence. Um, probably a few hundred microseconds. Yeah, that's, that's that short. Yeah. Yeah, so this is why there, there are no collision problems, because the, the radio and the gateway check each other. I could actually um, use... Um, cyclical redundancy check to make sure that the message sent uh, was acknowledged by the, by the transmitter and it, it was received by the gateway intact. It, all of that's available. Uh, this is just a, a very simple rudimentary demonstration of how to control a CW transmitter with your cell phone from anywhere in the neighborhood. From your car, from an airplane, from a fire engine, anything that's moving, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the, ra the radio is, is remarkably re reliable. I took this, I walked a mile from my apartment and it still worked. At a mile with just a little, little uh, whip antenna on each one of them. If I put better antennas on them, I could do from here to Tran Peak easily, and it, uh, with very good reliability. Yes, sir. And you use, you use a packet system. It, the, the radio takes care of all of the uh, the messaging. I don't have to I don't have to program how it's communicating because it's all built into the libraries. Okay, all right. And that's in the. The radio is built. It's it's a chip. A patented chip that's in this module here, and the, the gateway has one. And uh, you can buy gateways now for less than fifty dollars that have eight radios. So eight times maybe a several hundred. So imagine several hundred of these communicating on each channel, like we saw. See the nine oh nine point two. There are twenty or thirty <coughs> channels up there you can use that that aren't occupied. Uh, even if they were, it would still work because it's spread spectrum. The, the interference problems are, are very, uh, very low. This, so you can hear all of them at the same time? It, 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 uh, yes. And the, uh, because the messages are so short and they're so reliable, the gateway is not really working very hard. So the, the Arduino UN is, is operating at very low level of, of um, uh, you know, handling the code. Um, I saw a module, it just came out, just, just announced, it'll be available in the summer. It's not much bigger than this. It has eight radios, so it can handle uh, eight channels. So one can be sending, one can be receiving, so you can have simul it's full duplex. This is not full duplex. It, it, it sends, checks for sending and receiving, so it can't do both at once. So that's why you use two radios, two modules, 
one sending and receiving, so you can do simultaneous transmit and receive. Now, I would love to be able to expand this code and have it receive Morse code and translate it into text. That's significantly more difficult. <laughs> but, it can't, you know, it's totally possible. What is that chip, Brad? This, um, I bought this last year, $22. The Gateway is 60 and then the newer ones are even cheaper and with m many more radios. Um, so uh, let's say you put um, a single gateway connected by Wi-Fi or Ethernet to the Internet. Um, say uh, on a, a building downtown Lompoc, it can service the entire valley with maybe uh, two or 3,000 of these sending sensory data, temperature, humidity, pressure, um, location, velocity, anything that you can imagine that electronics does, it can do two ways. So you, if you have a, uh, like a, um, uh, an, uh, a transceiver that has a port on it that allows you to control it remotely, this, this could do that. But it requires coding. You see, that's the hang-up, is that uh, it requires the coding. But the problem that you face is not the coding, it's actually getting it hooked up properly. So the coding is secondary to, to actually installing all the hardware so that it, it's available to you. Now, uh, it's, it's entirely possible to program this thing completely with the, with the um, smartphone in the field. But um, I, I set this up in, on, my, on my workstation at home and uh, programmed them together by simulating the, um, you see it says console print, start sketch, console print, enet failed. Um, it can send that to a terminal, which is uh, the IDE, the, um, the Arduino uh, Integrated Development Environment. So I don't have to have it uh, hooked to a, to a serial port like this. This is just a USB serial port. and th This is what's called an on-the-go on cable. So uh, the smartphone supplies power out. I don't have to have a battery. This little module can be reduced in size to, to where it would fit inside here. So this could just like plug into the end here and I would have a two-way radio that's pre-programmed to do exactly what I want. And it doesn't have to be a terminal here. There can be an app uh, compiled uh, like an Arduino or uh, iOS, um, it's iOS, right? Macintosh, not Macintosh, Apple, the Apple phone. Um, or the, the um, Raspberry Pi. There's a hat for the Raspberry Pi that does the same thing. And, and it's not Arduino, it's actually Raspberry. So um, there, uh, if you go online and you just put in LoRa and say into YouTube, there'll be hundreds and hundreds of videos of people experimenting with this technology. And it's so inexpensive and so reliable that it's, it's, it's growing constantly. And there are big companies like IBM. Okay, questions. How, what's our time? Huh? I, I took up for a few minutes. Do we have any questions? Please ask me questions. Just, uh, <laughs> wait, you say in the computer we can pick up this uh, information. Yeah, what information do you want? What you're talking about, the... Uh, Chip down there. Okay, this is SparkFun made this, but there are dozens and dozens of companies making uh, radio modules. You can actually get the radio module separate from the Arduino module and attach it to whatever you want. Uh, they're only two or three dollars, the little radio modules. Um, this is a complete environment with the Arduino and the, uh, you, you see these headers? This can, this could, I can have sensors on here. One, one thing I want to do with this, um, I did this instead of what I had in mind at, at first. Um, a temperature sensor 
and an infrared temperature sensor, like the, the little uh, laser gun things you buy at uh, Home Depot for measuring temperature. There's one that can plug into here, and uh, you, you point it at the sky, it measures the temperature of the sky, and the temperature of the air, and the, the registration of the differences in temperature will give you whether it's cl uh, cloudy or not. So this can be on a photo solar power uh, cell um, on a mountaintop somewhere, and it can be transmitting to you, telling you if it's cloudy there or not, foggy, rainy, whatever. It'll do, it'll do all that. There are complete um, weather stations that this will transmit. So uh, you... <sighs> It can transmit, you know, once every second, every minute, every hour, every day, whatever you want. Um, uh, I think the record on the lowest power has been nine years for one of these modules. Of course, it's extrapolated. Who has a, a battery that'll last nine years? But they're embedding these in the asphalt with a little button cell so it detects traffic. So it's, it's sacrifice. So they're so low cost that uh, you just need one gateway, you know, every couple of miles in the city, and it accumulates all the traffic information in the streets because it, all it needs to, to detect is, is uh, velocity, you know, sound. It's basically the car that's rolling over. So all that kind of stuff is going on. Uh, with hams... The idea would be to use these to control your radio with with something like your smartphone. Yeah, there you go. Yes, sir. This one, um, I think I measured it. It's five volts at um, what was it? Five volts. I think it'll actually run on three point three. So. You could have a single lithium cell. Um, I believe it was... It was something like 50 or 60 milliamps while it's transmitting. You can actually make it go to sleep and, and wake up, say, every hour, transmit a message or receive a message and go back to sleep. So basically in a lithium cell, you know, those... Those real fat ones you get in the, you know, like there's one in here. There's, there are a couple of them in this thing. Uh, it could probably run on one of these for years with this wake sleep thing going. This is this is one advantage we have with this stuff. So, uh, you know, with like, again with the hand, the idea here is to do emergency stuff. So I can control a transmitter in, in an emergency. I can send a message with absolute reliability, reliability anywhere that I have access to the gateway with this, no matter whether there's power or not. And even if the cell site is down, this still works without the cell site. This is completely independent of anything terrestrial. Because <coughs> it's the ISM band, uh, Industrial Scientific Medical, 915 megahertz. You can see the frequency there, 909.2. That's just one of them there. I could have 20 or 30 of these sitting out here doing different things, and th that gateway will handle all of it. The, uh, the Arduino UN is very powerful. It, um, in the gateway, I can put an LTE module. I could put GPS. You know, you know what I mean by LTE? You know, phone home, the cell phone. So the, the gateway can connect to the internet through the LTE network. It has Wi-Fi. It has two Ethernet um, uh, ports, one for wide area and one for a local area. If, if, if you tell the gateway to use Wi-Fi, you have to be able to program it if the Wi-Fi doesn't work. So it has to have a separate network to, uh, with its own IP address so that you can, you can um, configure the gateway if the Wi-Fi doesn't work. 
<laughs> but the wide area network connects to a, a, a switch, so it can be on your network at home. So you can you could put the, the gateway in your attic with a little antenna on the roof and uh, do this two-way communication with literally hundreds or thousands of these modules anywhere in uh, a city. So it sounds like the application is fairly strong on the telemetry side. Yes. I'm not sure that it would keep up with the bandwidth requirements that we're seeing in today's emergency traffic. So, you know, where you're sending, you know, large forms of data. No, it, it's, it's um, in fact, it, it's intentionally kept um, punctuated uh, to accommodate as many messages as possible with a single gateway. Um, there's a limitation on the duration of the message in time. I think it's, I think it's 40 milliseconds or something like that. But the, uh, at, at uh, 125, uh, what, what's the bandwidth here? 100, what does it say there? Spreading factor, signal bandwidth, 125K. So that's the baud rate, 125K. So a, a message of uh, two or three sentences is, is only is a few microseconds. Boom, it's gone. How long, uh, at 125K, uh, how, you know, Let's say the baud rate is one tenth of that. So it's say 12k, 12k baud. 40 characters is it's just that's just a few microseconds. So you'd have to send them in batches if it was a longer one. Well, um, as you know, the computer is much faster than your typing. So sending messages is not an issue with, with this. The issue comes up as to how many radios are in communication at any one time. And because the, the radio can check that the message has been sent reliably, if it's not, it'll just resend it. All of that can be very easily programmed here with these loops. So uh, should I, I'm asking a question, should I try and pursue Morse code decode, sending the Morse code as text to the radio so we can <coughs> see it on the smartphone. Should I do that? You think it'd be worthwhile? I think there'd be more value being able to put telemetry on their sites where you can measure temperature, water sensor, uh, battery voltage, AC voltage, yep. having all of that metering uh -huh. for the various sites. He health health information of the site. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. That's um, out of band uh -huh. signaling so that if you lose your communication, you can do a quick check on yeah. what you have. Is it alive? For health in, yes. in your infrastructure. This is well suited for that. That's, that's why this technology was developed, is to do those very things. So if you lost power at site one, for example, you're not getting a response, you can check with that and go, oh, okay, well, AC power's down, our DC voltage went down to 9 volts, oops. Okay, okay. Here, so, here's something I haven't I talked about that relates to that. Um, the gateways, you can program them to mesh. So they will mesh through the LoRa or through the Internet. Whatever, or even the LTE, they'll mesh through the LTE. Right. So th they can be programmed... So you have multiple gateways. Let's say there's one on each, each of our uh, repeater sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, wherever you are with the radio, it will send the message and it will always get to, to the internet or wherever you're sending it because the get, there are so many gateways available, they'll mesh together. So it, like you said, if, if a site is down, if it's lost, it's wireless or whatever, um, the, me the gateways will mesh together. So it, it's another layer of infrastructure that's very low power very, and very reliable that, that can be used to do exactly what you said, check the health of different sites or hardware or with the weather, whatever they're trying to do. So with this system, 
if we had a if we had another radio at say at a site, does it have the ability to then send commands back to it to say it's uh, you know power reset the, mm -hmm. the you know, yes reset this circuit or, or um, put the power on this or. There, there are a couple of modules available, gateways, with two radios, so you can do simultaneous, you know, full duplex. So you can, you can be sending commands and watching what they, what they do in real time on the same, on the same um, receiver, transceiver. Um, just a little bit extra cost, and of course it's programming. But the great thing about the programming is, once you get the gateway set up, you can program it remotely. You don't have to be at the gateway. You can set it up there so you can program it through. Through uh, now, so, someone told me that uh, I read where they're going to try and do programming through the low raw module. I don't know how how that's going to work, but uh, certainly through you know um, uh, dynamic DNS, that's totally possible. Um, so the gateway can can have its own IP address. So it's, and uh, of course, the Arduino will do that. The Arduino IDE will program through through the uh, dynamic uh, DNS. I don't know if everyone understands what I'm talking about. I, I know you do. <laughs> I have an application I want to talk to you about. For yeah. Thing. I think this may be the answer I've been looking for. I'll just briefly outline it so you can sure. see, see the thinking. Maybe the others will help. Like yes, sir. I, I showed in a recent presentation some months ago uh, a vector network analyzer that I have. Yeah. A little box. That, uh, mm -hmm. And one of the things it does is it, it, will, it will do polar plots of an antenna pattern. Yeah. If you can... If you can communicate a, a an antenna rotor with an antenna rotor at distance mm -hmm. and turn the antenna rotor mm -hmm. in command of the VNA, the VNA can pick up the signal coming back uh -huh. and give you a polar plot. Pro propagation station. pattern. That's what I've been wanting to do yes. for a long time with it. Because, as you know, I build simple antennas largely for publication in QSD. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I would I would often want to have a, a you know Easy Neck is fine Easy Neck is a good simulator but Easy Neck has its shortcomings in the real world. It has to you be know, real world. It would be nice to it would be nice to put this antenna a mile away on an right. antenna rotor and tell the VNA okay go and the, it would command the antenna rotor to turn yeah. at a predictable rate so and and make records of the signal. Uh -huh. back. <laughs> and you could do it at the horizon very easily with this. Yeah. This will go to the horizon. Yeah, we don't. We, we typically want a mile. <laughs> this seems to be ideal. Yeah, I, I've been looking for this kind of a thing. Yes, uh, this this has um, A to D, mm -hmm. uh, pulse width modulation, uh, multiple digital I/O ports. Of course, the radio. That's just the, uh, the little spark phone module. The gateway is actually. It, what you want to do, but this... The coding seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. I'm, I'm a coder, but uh, most rotors that you buy, the, the code to, to drive them is, is well published, so uh, it would be easy to interface with this. This, this, this is the loop that does the... Uh, it grabs the, the, uh, the packet message from the radio and puts it into a buffer and then um, checks to see if there are any uh, upper or lowercase, makes sure everything's lowercase. Then it sends it, see this get chr, get ca character right here? This. That's the routine here. So you get, this is the routine that does the uh, Morse code. And you see it's a, it's a switch case. Routine. So all the all the numbers in the alphabet are below this. We don't have to go through all that. You see the on the right there the column, all those those columns. That's the Morse code. It's a far cry from G is basic. This is this is C. Actually, it's, it's C. It's very 
It's, it's, it's a little cryptic, but... Uh, Not if the great thing is that when you have it on your desktop, you can, you can test everything. So you can, you can uh, by building the code up, you can, you can test to make sure everything works. Um, the, the Arduino is doing the pulse width modulation to produce the tone that we heard. Yeah. Um, and uh, I actually have a light that goes on and off, an LED. It flashes. So uh, with this routine, it would, it, you could, instead of having it beep and flash a light, it, connect it to the key on the uh, transmitter. So you're just sending force to, to an LED. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's all right. Of course, it's you know, people have 1,000 watt transmitters. That it makes this thing very powerful. <laughs> it's an impressive little device. And being wireless, it, you can... You could have the transmitter up on the mountain, and you can be sitting in your bedroom, typing away on your on your uh, cell phone, sending Morse code. You know, help! I need a helicopter. <laughs> this has a, the little project that I have, uh, and Dave Dowler and I have talked about this a lot in the past. Uh, we have a very ideal situation here at the club. The site one and the clubhouse here are separated by quite a nice deep valley. Yes. There's no reason that that antenna rotor couldn't be put over at site one, and the command of it was the DNA over here, such that when you simply, you, you built an antenna, you want to know what it's pattern like. You haul it up, put it on the antenna rotor, and come back over here and say, go, and <laughs> you'll have it you'll have a fly. Well, the, the gateway can be connected to the internet, it, uh, at, the, at site one, you could put the gateway there. There could be an antenna, say, pointing down at Lompoc, so that this the little radio module will work all through the valley there. Yeah. But you you'd be able to access it on your yeah. on your smart device through a website because it has a complete web interface. Yeah, I can see the ramifications. Oh yeah, it's oh, massive. Interested, interested in point to point. And, it's, it's, and you can see the code is very compact. It's not. It's not a, a yes, massive. It like a massive. I say, it's not gee whiz basic. <laughs> um, and and there are literally tens of thousands of people doing this stuff, and oh, they have code online. I mean, it's just there's a massive amount of of um, not support but uh, participants. The with this, you have with you always. The, the, the reason why, it, it, you know, people ask me, well, why, what, what are hams? Why are hams? Well, hams are are interested in doing emergency response, and uh, this can be built into an emergency response system. I'm just demonstrating that how it could be done. Um, there would be, uh, we we would want total two way command and control with sending messages. <laughs> And the gateway can do DNS, so it could send and receive email. So it could do uh, uh, total, you know, I could, I could send a message here, and it could compile it by DNS. And, and the module uh, sends out its own personality, so uh, the gateway can filter which one has authority to do what and so on. All of that's available in the libraries. So it's, it's like, you know, password protected if you want. It, it, it could do any of that. I didn't do any of this, but it, uh, password protecting send and receive is totally in the picture there. So all of the stuff that you're used to with your email and accounts and, accounts and DNS and um, authentication, it's all available with this stuff. You can't do it all and learn it all. Right. The libraries are very useful. You just mount them and they work. <laughs> yeah, that's what's good. The, the, the uh, heavy lifting has been done by the people who have the patents. But for, you know, the radio adds, you know, five to ten dollars to any, any device. Very good. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay. I'm five minutes over time. Oh, no.